In the tapestry of musical history, the 16th century witnessed a daring quest for celestial harmonies. Enter the castrati, an extraordinary substitute for female voices in choirs. While some basked in the limelight of fame, others were shrouded in the shadows of poverty and obscurity, painting a complex picture of this fascinating tradition. The audacious idea of castrating their own sons for a shot at stardom may seem inconceivable today. Yet for Italian parents, it was a genuine consideration. The castrati, those revered male singers with ethereal high-pitched tones, were born from this controversial practice. Among the stars of this mesmerizing constellation was Farinelli. His voice said to possess the power to dispel the king's depression during his decade-long serenades at the Spanish court. However, for numerous others, a different fate awaited. A life marked by hardship and the lingering effects of their castration. A haunting legacy etched in unusual bone growth, osteoporosis, and the shadows of depression. This is a captivating tale of the castrati, Italian singers forever bound to an extraordinary and poignant destiny. Their songs echoing through the ages like the reverberating melodies of an ancient aria. step into a world where music and sacrifice intertwine, unveiling the enigmatic origins of the castrati. In the luminous tapestry of history, the 16th century marks the birth of this unparalleled phenomenon. With women banned from church choirs by the Vatican, a celestial void emerged, beckoning for voices that soared to heavenly heights. And thus the castrati, the ethereal high-pitched singers, emerged from the shadows to fill the void, their extraordinary journey fueled by implicit approval from the highest authority. In the 18th century, an astonishing number of Italian boys, a staggering 4,000 each year, ventured down a path less traveled, a path destined to define their fate. The desire for musical stardom propelled them to undergo the life-altering procedure of castration, a perilous pursuit shrouded in clandestine operations. For these brave young souls, dreams of greatness transcended the fear of pain as they embraced the sacrifices required to achieve the heights of their musical aspirations. Within the walls of the schools for castrati, these tender voices honed their craft, nurtured by dreams of fame and fortune whispered by their families. Frozen in boyhood yet destined to become celestial instruments, their spirits resonated with hope and ambition, echoing through the hallowed halls of their training ground. Their journey was one of contrasts, where the ecstasy of harmonious heights clashed with the haunting echoes of sacrifice. But as the grand symphony of their lives unfolded, they left an indelible mark on the world of music, their voices transcending the limitations of time to echo through the annals of history. Thus the captivating tale of the castrati emerged, a tale of soaring melodies and heart-rending choices. As we unveil their story, we bear witness to the enthralling collision of passion and sacrifice a testament to the indomitable spirit of these young souls who aspired to touch the celestial heavens with their voices. The extraordinarily popular singers who enraptured Europe with their heavenly performances. Though the practice was mainly limited to Italy, these ethereal artists traversed the continent, earning immense admiration and substantial fees for their operatic brilliance. Despite facing dismissive labels, their allure and prowess became the stuff of legends, with rumors of their captivating charm spreading far beyond borders. Italian author Casanova mused on the intense temptation they stirred, remarking that only someone as cold and earthbound as a German could resist. Among these captivating voices were two luminaries, Senesino and Farinelli. Senesino's collaboration with composer Handel made him a sought-after talent commanding a remarkable 3,000 pounds guineas annually. As the primo uomo of Handel's Royal Academy of Music, Senesino's resonant voice resonated in 17 leading operatic roles, enchanting London's audiences. Yet even Senesino's brilliance was eclipsed by the dazzling stardom of Farinelli. Reaping 5,000 pounds per year from his captivating performances across Europe, Farinelli's talents were sought even by Queen Elisabetta Farnese of Spain, who hoped his melodies could heal her husband's depression. For an additional 1,500 guineas yearly, 
he graced King Philip V with private performances, possibly serving the king for a decade. Composer Johann Joachim Quantz could hardly contain his admiration for Farinelli's mastery, praising his unrivaled manner of singing, fiery allegros, and articulate, pleasing divisions that emanated from his chest. While some, like Senesino and Farinelli, basked in fame and fortune, many others remained in the shadows, never reaching such celestial heights. Nevertheless, audiences showered their castrati heroes with affectionate cheers like Eviva il coltellino, or Long Live the Little Knife. Yet fame came with a price. Health problems later haunted these castrati, stemming from their young castrations. The echoes of their sacrifices remind us of the extraordinary cost they paid for their immortal melodies. Castration, once a pathway to ethereal voices, also unleashed a symphony of health challenges that resonated throughout the lives of these unique singers. Remarkably tall and elongated, Castrati's open growth plates from the lack of hormones created strikingly long bones, adding an unusual strain on their organs and raising the risk of osteoporosis later in life. Their bodies took on a fascinating transformation. Chests, jaws, and noses grew larger, a feature that lent an advantage in expanding breath capacity during their soul-stirring performances. However, the passage of time often took a toll. Many Castrati's bodies evolved, leading them to grow as large and robust as capons, with round hips, arms, and throats. When the legendary Farinelli's body was exhumed, it revealed intriguing evidence. Long bones and a peculiar buildup of bones on his forehead, a condition known as hyperostosis frontalis interna. Typically found in women, this condition could be accompanied by headaches, depression, and other mental health challenges, affecting many castrati in their later years. Yet despite the physical transformations and health issues, the era of the castrati waned by the 19th century as their unique artistry gave way to the changing tides of musical preferences. Nevertheless, their legacy endures, echoing through history as a testament to the indelible mark these captivating voices left on the world of music. Intriguingly, the enigmatic castrati began to fade into oblivion, their once celestial voices now shrouded in a symphony of silence. The dawn of the 18th century saw women reclaiming the stage, a turning point that eroded the castrati's prominence. The tides of opinion also shifted drastically. Jean-Jacques Rousseau's scathing condemnation in 1779 castigated parents who surrendered their sons to the cruel fate of castration, branding them as inhuman fathers. The allure of castrati performances started losing its luster in Italy, and even Pope Pius V forbade their use in the Sistine Chapel by 1903. By then, illustrious castrati, such as Girolami Crescentini and Giovanni Battista Velluti, had long hung up their celestial mantles. However, the last of the Sistine Chapel Castrati, Alessandro Moreschi held on until 1913. Revered as the Angel of Rome, his ethereal melodies echoed through time, living on through a haunting recording of his voice. Although the tradition of castrating young boys for musical pursuits thankfully faded away, the legacy of the castrati still evoked emotions of lamentation. Their decline left admirers yearning for the resonating chords that once stirred their souls, a sentiment summed up eloquently by one fan who exclaimed, it made you feel truly melancholy. As the era of the castrati receded into the past, their story stands as a haunting reflection on a unique chapter in musical history where the pursuit of perfection intersected with the ultimate price of sacrifice. Though their celestial voices have fallen silent, the echoes of their once resplendent presence continue to resonate, a poignant reminder of a remarkable musical legacy that will forever enchant and captivate the hearts of those who encounter it.